Hey folks, um, so today marks the third episode. Um, I'm gonna actually getting cutting pins right now. And I was thinking a lot about this. What type of pin should I start with? Um, I was thinking about starting with just, you know, a straight up serrated pin or a straight up spool pin or something like that. But I thought, you know, it'd be better if I can give you two different technologies in the same pin uh, per video, if I can. So I think some of you may remember, I got a bug on me, that sucks, the Kronos pin that I had made. And basically what it is, it's an hourglass shaped pin with a serration at both ends. I can, will actually pick it up. And you can see kind of what it looks like. There. It's a nice little design, but just before making the video a little earlier today, when I was getting set up, I decided, hey, let's try it again and let's do a 7 millimeter version. And that has two serrations at each end, and this is a Kronos version 2. So this is the one I'm going to actually duplicate again and try and show you how to make. Where's the center of the camera? There it is, right there. It's kind of weird. It's backwards, so forgive me. Now, let's uh, let's draw the diagram first, just so that we know, you know, and to go back to what I did before. We're gonna start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven millimeters long. One, two three millimeters wide and that's a lot of room to work in so now we know from the v2 that there is the neck in the middle we've got the spacing at the top that we need for before the first serration where the rounded part is going to be and then we know that there is at least one serration there, followed by one here. We'll just fill that out. And then we're going to have about the same on the other side. Focus the camera. There. This thing won't autofocus for me because it's Logitech and I seriously don't think that those idiots know how to make a camera. Um, but, you know, it's Logitech. What do you want? So, there's the main part of it. And then we know we're going to be cutting a hourglass shape in. So, let's just do that right about to the middle part. There. And then what's filled in is what we're going to be cutting away. And I can't draw. This is a rough surface. It makes it tough to draw a nice even curve. So that's our diagram. That's what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you look, I've already got my piece of metal chucked up here. This is 3 millimeter brass rod stock that you can get off of Amazon. There we are. Finally. Okay, so I'm going to start cutting. And uh, if you've watched my other videos, you kind of know what's going on here. First things first is I want to take the initial measurement of the piece. So I'm going to get out my caliper here. It's just, you know, standard Harbor Freight digital caliper. I don't think it costs all that much. We're going to open it up to 7 millimeters. It's okay if it's a little more. You're not going to be that accurate with the saw anyway. And we're going to come on the end, make sure that I got enough sticking out of the chuck that I only have what I need exposed. 
because we want to cut down on wobble. Anytime you've got wobble, you're going to have a problem. So yeah, that's about right. I'm set at seven millimeters. Now let's get this show on the road. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score the metal with the tip of the caliper. Now, remember, make sure the teeth on the saw are going the right way. And we're going to start by just lightly pressing on the outside, almost like when we were cutting the brass stock. Get a little bit better light there. And you want to cut outside the line. If, you, if you're familiar with woodworking, you'll know what that means. Because we want to save as much of that 7 millimeters as we can. Sometimes you have to clean the blade because it'll look like the blade is going dull, uh, but the reality is it's just getting bound up with brass. So I've cut this pin about halfway through now. You don't want to go any further than that. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a little bit further than I would have wanted, but this gives me a good definition of what I'm going to be cutting into. So let's look back at the diagram real quick. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the serrations at either end. Now I've marked them off within the space of two millimeters on the end, but I'm actually going to try and get them a little closer than that. And that's just, you know, you're diagramming to give you a rough idea of what you're cutting. You're not trying to take exact measurements. After all, you're doing this by hand. If you can come up with a nice little slide thing like what key cutters have to, you know, move a saw blade up and in it, into it, you might have a pretty good market there for yourself. So let's add one serration pretty close to the end over here. Start off light and apply gradual pressure. And you can kind of visually look when you can tell that it's in. So now I'm going to go to the other side of the pin. I'm going to do the same thing. And I always do that. I go from left to right to left to right because I want to try and maintain at least some symmetry. So there's two serrations. This one could use a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to come back to this side. Cut the next serration. Then to this side. And I'm making the serrations a little bit wider on the second pass. And the reason for that is because I want variance. When I'm trying to make a pin, I don't want it perfectly symmetrical. If it's symmetrical, it's predictable. So then, we know we got to make the hourglass in the middle according to the diagram. So let's just go ahead and go straight to the middle of the remainder. And just eyeball it, you know, don't, don't get out your caliper or nothing, but just kind of... Go. Now this one we're going to cut... Mm, Maybe twice as deep as you think you need to get halfway through the material. And you can see I've gone ahead and done that. So now, <clears throat> I've got that in there, but that's not meant, you know, that center cut right there. Let me see if I can adjust the focus just a little bit better for you. No, nope, that's about how good, good as it's going to get. Um, is because the other tool I'm going to use to make this pin is a uh, triangle diamond file sort of thing. Um, and we're going to get, again, keep working from the back. This is a channel for me to place the center of this on so that I can do that nice 45 degree angle in the middle. Uh, 
and we just go ahead and start shaping. And what we're going to do is we're going to alternate by moving left and bringing that angle. You can see I'm slowly bringing that angle to the left. And now I'm going to slowly bring some to the right. And this is how you get that hourglass shape, is you just roll it from the tip over. Don't try and go too fast. Remember, this isn't a race here. You, you want it done more right than anything else. And you don't have to press that hard either. Remember, you can always take more material off. You can't put material back on. And there's a pretty good, uh, pretty good shape going here. I'm looking at the profile. And sometimes you might need to change the color behind it. You know, put something black behind it just so you can get a better look of what it, you know, what the profile is while it's spinning. But all you have to do is. Just keep touching it up, try and get it close to those serrations without going past them. Now, there's the basic shape, but I got some cleanup to do. First things first, the nub from the last time I cut it off is still on the end. We don't, on this particular pin, we don't want something like that on there. So let's just go ahead and grind that off real quick. Brass is harder than you think, you know, depending on which kind you get. You know, it's not steel hard, but it's pretty hard stuff. So we got that mostly off so it won't tear my paper. And now we're just going to sit there and we're just going to loosely, you, you don't want to, you know, dig in with, with it. Just kind of loosely go over the pin to just kind of round the end, get it nice and smooth. And then we're going to take the same paper and we're just going to go over the top. That cleans up the outside. It also takes off, you know, the rod comes in at about 3.03 millimeters. This brings it down to just below 3 millimeters, which is kind of what you want. Now what you're going to do is take the edge of the sandpaper and you're going to carefully come in. Same thing. Remember, you don't want to press on it. You're just pulling the sandpaper against it. Kind of like, you know, you're drying your butt with a towel, that sort of thing. And you're just going to kind of get in there and smooth out the inside of this. <laughs> now, we're done shaping the entire pin all the way to the end. Let's go ahead and cut it off. Just back and forth, nice and gently. When you get close to the end, you'll feel it start to grab as the diameter of the center part comes off. If you just go very, very lightly against it, it'll come off nice and easy. So, now that that's taken off, let's go ahead and uncheck this. Pull out our rod stock. We can still get two or three more pins out of that. And now let's take the pin that we just made, go ahead and flip it around so that the side that we haven't finished, the part that we just cut off, is at the end. And let's just pop this in there like that. Now, depending on your chuck, you may have a hard time getting this thing in there straight. The chuck that came with my Dremel, I believe, is a 3mm chuck, and it fits these perfectly. It's worth it to get the right size. 
So now that we're going again, let, again, let's take off the nub. That way it doesn't tear through our, uh, our sandpaper. And then we do the same thing. Get it a little speed up a little bit here. So we're just going to run it over and then we're just going to smooth it kind of on a curve. And folks, there you go. We have a completed Kronos Mark II. Come on. There we go. Let's bring this up to the camera. Now you can do things like make your serrations a little bit deeper uh, into the metal. I made these very light intentionally uh, on this one. Um, but you can go ahead and if you say, hey, you know, this is something I wanted to mention. If you are, say, done with the pin and you're like, you know, this didn't quite come out the way I was expecting, take the time to fix it. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make these serrations bigger just to show you that there's nothing wrong with going back and recutting something that you have already cut. Again, make sure your blade's facing the right direction. same thing back to the other side and sometimes you know you, you'll say hey that looks good I got that set up right and then you'll sand the exterior of it and realize oh I didn't make those as deep as I thought I would point is don't be afraid to go in and make adjustments make sure your saw is the right way I gotta put like a an arrow here like a reddit upvote arrow Serrations are much better now. <laughs> it's even catching in the uh, the bit. So I didn't get it quite as good. Um, you see, this side's thicker than the other, but that's all right. Like I said, it doesn't have to be consistent. Um, I'll, I'll give another look here so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see that the pattern on one side is not the same as on the other. Overall though, I'm happy with how this pen came out. It's kind of like a, a Duncan yo-yo with two other yo-yos attached to the outside of it or something like that. But at any rate, that's the Kronos version too. I hope you found the video helpful now that you've seen the actual pin making process. Um, and I'll be doing another one here uh, probably before the end of the night if not uh, tomorrow morning. I've also got a few lock opening videos I'm going to be doing. Um, nothing too spectacular, just some uh, some master locks, uh, and maybe maybe I might start to discuss some other stuff uh, with challenge lock making. Uh, otherwise, have a good night, folks. Thanks for watching, uh, and we'll catch you later.